everybody. Welcome to the lounge. How you doing? And, uh, anyway, no, we are here to talk about compression today. And we are um, not talking about any products per se, but we are talking about the idea of compression, what it does, where you should or shouldn't put it in your signal chain, which is really no right or wrong answer. There's different effects for everything. Uh, different effects that come from doing it in different places. Uh, so we're going to explore several different options here. And what we have is JHS, is that the Angry Charlie? Yes. Yeah, so Angry Charlie, the Wampler Ego Compressor, the MXR 10 Band EQ, the uh, Boss Digital Delay, the DD3, and a Strymon Big Sky. So what we're doing is we're putting the delay and the reverb in the effects loop the it will eventually put the compressor in the effects loop but right now we've got the distortion pedal the compressor and the um the 10 band eq in front of the amp with the delay and the reverb in the effects loop so let's get on to getting on <laughs> You can hear it really just it it the way I have it set now there's a million different ways you can do this but kind of what I'm doing is I'm kind of overdoing things from what I would normally do like I'm kind of pushing the attack a little more uh, making it sustain a little longer I'm blending it a little harder than I normally would so to make it a little bit drastic so you can tell what a compressor does whenever it's in a certain spot so here here's some uh, some noodling with uh, with the compressor off and on. I'll, I'll come in and, uh, and do a little bit of both. So you listen to that and here's a That's off, here's on. So essentially kind of what a, a compressor is originally made for is to kind of tame a waveform, you know? So like it, I think it probably originated in recording studios so they could max out the volume. Because what happens is if you don't have a compressor, you get these peaks, you know, where you go. And valleys and what the compressor does is it kind of brings down the peaks so you can bring up the valleys and, and it kind of brings everything a little bit more in your face a little bit more present a lot of times so some people use compression com compression pedals compression pedals to shut cell phones off <laughs> larry i'm kidding no but they use compression pedals to kind of knock the edge off and kind of bring it to where everything can get pushed forwards so So what some people will do is they'll add a little EQ after it to kind of get that brightness back. So So you kind of get back what you took away by using the compressor. 
So now what I want to do, I'll tell you what, let's just add some, let's add some distortion and play a little bit so we can uh, maybe fig we can see what it sounds like with some gain. <laughs> That's without, here's with. So that really kind of just puts it right out there. You know what I mean? It kind of pushes everything up and it tames down the high, the, 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 the peaks so you can bring everything up and make your, make your own more present. Now again, I'm really doing, probably everything about 15% more than I normally would because I want to make sure you can hear it. But also please realize that you can pull back from this and I'll show you what that means. Um, the, not, the blend knob right now on the compressor is at about 1045 or 11. So that's blending it and what it's doing is it's blending the compressed signal with the uncompressed signal. What I'm gonna do is pull that back so you can hear a little bit more of like a little, maybe a little more subtle, okay? That's with it all the, well, probably just a little above all the way out. So here I'm gonna crank it up and you can hear the compressed signal more. So I'm going to turn the compressor off. So some people will say don't use a compressor or use it very minimally because you kind of lose a little bit of your, maybe your expression and some of the, the punchiness and the, the you know, the, um, what do they call that, the transient, Larry? I'm trying to think back to the old studio days. But um, so anyway, let's put that back in and hear, let's hear what it sounds like without it and then with, and then I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna put the EQ in, okay? Here's with. Here's with the EQ to bring back a little bit of the highs. Sorry about that. So here's the EQ without the compressor. sounds good with or without it just depends on what you want you know so what we're going to do now I'm going to take a little break and we're going to put the EQ in front of the compressor and see what that does let's have some fun all right so here it is exact same settings didn't change anything we just swapped the pedals so now the EQ is in front of the compressor So what I notice is that you can get more of a maximum effect out of the EQ pedal if it is after the compressor. I don't like multi-band EQs on my pedal board because it seems like everything you do, it's somewhat extreme. I like a little bit more gradual, you know, like slope um, or cue, they would say in the studio. So. 
to put it in front of the compressor really makes me think maybe I would like an EQ on my board because I can kind of make it a little more subtle by putting it in front of the, the, the compressor. So anyway, that's that. So now what we're going to get into is we're not going to use the EQ now. We're going to focus on the Angry Charlie and the Ego compressor and how they work together in front and behind each other. So let's do that. Here's with the compressor. Okay, so exact same settings, but with the compressor in front of the, the Angry Charlie distortion pedal. Wow, that's a big difference. That's a big difference. So essentially what I feel like you're doing is you're kind of compressing the, 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 it's exactly what you're doing, not what I feel. You're compressing the signal and then feeding it into this distortion pedal. So you're really giving this distortion pedal like a full signal and it's really putting it up in your face. And it's like, to me, that's pretty ballsy. I mean, that really puts the, you know, gives it a good rogering. So to me, that's like, that's drastic. And that's, that's something to consider. So hopefully, and like I said, please understand, these are pretty drastic settings. The things that I'm cranking is really the blend. So I'm putting more of the compressed signal in, and I'm really kind of letting it attack more, or it's, it's cutting off the transients, the attacks of the notes a little more than I would like. Um, some people like to knock that down so it sounds a little more smooth. So let's get on to getting on to putting this in the effects loop with a delay and a reverb, okay? So we can hear kind of some cool stuff that Larry brought to my attention and I may ask for his advice to help me with this. So give me just a second, we'll set this thing up. Let's just say you could take an amp apart like easy as pie, you could take an amp apart you run into the front of it and you've got a preamp section that has your gain and most of your tone controls and all that. You go into the front of the amp, you hit the preamp, which is where your gain lives and, your, and all your tone controls and things like that. Well then, there's the power amp section, which it's mainly to amplify the sound. It's a power amp, okay? In between there, you have this, an output out of the preamp and an input back into the power amp, which is called an effects loop. A lot of times what you do is you put your time-based, like your reverbs, delays, modulation, that kind of stuff, in the effects loop because you don't really want to color the repeats and the reverb with the preamp section of your amp. What we're focused on here now is why you would want to put a compressor in the effects loop, okay? So We've got the Angry Charlie in front of the amp again, and then we've got um, in the effects loop, we have a DD3 Boss digital delay, we've got a Big Sky from Strymon, which is a reverb pedal, and we've got an Ego compressor, okay? So what I'm gonna do first is just play, I'm gonna leave the reverb on the whole time just to give it some, some reverb. <laughs> um, but what we're gonna do, I'm gonna play with just the delay for a minute, and then you're going to hear something really cool. And I got to say something here. I've known Larry for about 15 years now. And it's almost like weekly I get a little schooling from him. He helped me learn a lot of stuff in the recording studio. And I got to say thanks because this is a new little trick that's pretty awesome um, for some effect type stuff. And it really feels good for things like I can kind of see this being really good for Pink Floyd and stuff like that. 
just take a listen to what this does. I'm going to I'm going to play without the compressor on, then I'm going to add it. So, and I'm going to try to play the same thing. So think about what you heard. I'll wait. Anyway, no, just kidding. It's YouTube. So what what I what the cool effect is, and if you're not getting it, is when the compressor is off, after each attack, there is a delay happening, okay? But the way we have it set with a really fast attack and a long sustain and the blend up pretty high on the compressor is what you're doing. You're kind of initiating the compressor with the attack. And if you keep playing, you're killing all the delays, okay? But what happens is when you stop playing, you're not cueing the compressor anymore. So what happens is the repeats all kind of just blossom and come to life at the end. So it's really nice and you could do a lot more subtle setting here where it's really more pleasing to the ear during your solo but then at the end or at the end of a little phrase, you know, if you do a little nugget like a Pink Floyd kind of David Gilmore thing, it really lets that delay blossom. So let's, let's take a listen. Here's without it. So you can hear the delays all the time. Now here's, here's with it. And there they are, okay? So let's do this. Let's cut this blend back a little bit and maybe make it. See, now that to me, that's getting a little more musical, a little less drastic. So you can kind of keep tinkering with that and get. But as you take the blend out, you're letting those delays creep back in because you're using an uncompressed signal. So you're letting them creep back in. Well, you can do that, turn the blend back up and maybe turn the attacks a little slower or actually, wait a minute, sustain down a little bit. That's cool. Thank you, Larry. This is good stuff, man. So now what we're going to do, we're going to put the compressor in front of the amp. That's all we're going to do. We're just going to put the compressor in front of it. I've, I do have the Big Sky reverb in the effects loop, um, but here we go. So this is without the compressor. Here's with. So right there, you feel like the preamp tube's getting filled up, warmed up, heated up, all that. I'm gonna do a little bit of playing and then so you can hear a little difference. So here's without and with, and then uh, I'll maybe nod my head when I switch it on. You'll, you'll hear it, it's not, it's gonna be pretty drastic. So you just heard what the, what the uh, compression pedal in front of the preamp sounds like and what the various things that it can do there. Let's put it in, in the effects loop um, and let's just see what it does. What we've done is we've kind of dialed it to where it's just kind of a nice boost. Now it does compress it a little bit, but we kind of took, a, we tried to take as much of that out of there as we can and made it just a little boost, okay? So now this, understand, you can take like a normal boost pedal and do these kind of various things too. You can push the front of your amp with it, or you can push, the, you know, just give it a little boost after all of your coloring, okay? We'll get into another little bonus section too here in a little bit about the, what you can do with the power amp too with a compressor, compressor in the, in the power, in the effects loop. So let's try this. So this is without anything um, except reverb from the big sky.
So we got just a hint of breakup without the compressor and listen again. There might be a touch added more, but it's not much. I mean, it's just a nice little boost. So, you know, if you're playing along and you're, you know, you're doing, uh, you're doing something like that and you, you, you know, you want to get into, you just need that extra little bump. That's cool. So let's do another little thing. And once again, Larry comes through, but let's, um, let's really push the power amp section with this compressor and see what happens. And I'm going off the rails here with the volume knob. Okay. So here's without. Here's with. Wow. Okay, so that's that's that. So listen with it off now. That's actually a better sounding distortion than a lot of distortion pedals out there. <laughs> that's a really cool little trick. makes that uh, reverb shine. That's cool. Good job, Larry. We'll keep you around for a while. Let's leave it at that. That's enough for one video. I think this video is going to be like an hour and 15 minutes long. But anyway, I hope you've learned something. If you have any other questions, we would love to chat. Like we, cr we consider our online store as kind of like our brick and mortar. When people come into our brick and mortar, we're extremely helpful. We've been, you know, received a ton of awards for service and things like that. We do the same thing and we want to offer that service to you online. If you have any questions about this, consider it like walking into your local music store. Consider us that. We're here to help. We love helping and we're very sincere about that. So if you have any questions, please ask uh, call us, ask Rob, Ed, Corey, myself, anybody that answers the phone, we'll do our best to get your answers. Uh, please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you like this video, we're going to try to do a lot more of this informational stuff. Um, as we go, we used to do a lot. We forgot about it. Now we're back. So we're going to keep doing it. Um, please go to our website, moreguitars.com and, uh, sign up for our newsletter. You'll get daily arrivals, new tips like this and, and all that kind of stuff. So you'll be ahead of the game. If you got buddies that you're trying to beat out playing and you got a band you're in and you want to be the best you can be, we're here to help you do that. So please check us out, moreguitars.com. I don't know the phone number, but it's on our website. Check it out and you can live chat on there, email, whatever you want to do. But please, please ask us questions and, uh, and, uh, and have a great day and play some rock and roll. See ya.